Rick Emmett talks about his favorite Triumph song to play. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Book. The entire interview with Rick's available on our sister channel if you want to see the entire thing right now. It's there waiting for you at Rock History Book. There's links in the description and also links to the podcast. Here's Rick Emmett. You know what? When I listen to albums before an interview, a lot of the times, not being a guitarist and a bad drummer, but I can kind of tell, and it, maybe they're just humoring me. I'll go, track three, blah, blah, blah. That, that's got to be a fun song to play, right? And sometimes I'm, but... Dan, uh, Darren Lowry says, what's your favorite Triumph song to perform? What was one of those songs that just put? Well, uh, okay. I, I think when you're talking about fun to play, you know, uh, different songs have different moments where I look forward to this moment coming in a song because I, you know, I really dig this moment. Like it, when I did Magic with the guys at the documentary in the last verse there's a thing where gill plays this single stroke role in the in the verse of it going out and i look forward to it every time because it's not it's not something that every drummer would choose to do but it's gill sort of trying to channel john bonham with a single stroke role like and it's just, it's just this really cool thing and i i always look forward to that moment but as songs go the the triumph song that i like the most and I played it every single night of my life when I played my own shows, even solo or, or duo. It would be at the end of the night, I would do Suitcase Blues off the Just a Game album. And it's not really a triumph song. It, you know, it's a Rick Emmett tune based on Joe Pass guitar chords. You know, it's a jazz tune. But the, the when I played it for the guys and we were so desperate for material all the time, they go, oh, we put it on the album as a, like a PS right at the end, you know. Like Her Majesty was on... Uh, Abbey Road. We'll we'll have our own little jazz tune right at the right right at the ass end of the record, and and uh, I, I'm always grateful for the fact that that the, the guys allowed me to do things like that. You know, have little guitar pieces and have, but suitcase to me it was a song that had a it had a melancholy to it, but it also had this kind of thing of like, hey, you know, folks, this guy's not just a rock guitar player. This guy's got some chops. You know, he kind of knows what he's doing, and I can't tell you how many people have said to me over the years, when I heard that song, I went, wow, I had no idea. And, you know, geez, that certainly doesn't belong on a rock record, but what a great, what a great treat that it's there. So it, that thing opened up doors for me and, and, and it made things possible for me in ways that no other Triumph song really had. And I always enjoyed playing it. Um, it was always a challenge. And my favorite story about this is I got to play the song twice live with Ed Bickert and Ed played on it. And um, the two stories, one of them was we, we played at this thing called the night of a thousand guitars. And it was at the Phoenix in, in Toronto. It was in conjunction with the guitar festival in like 1987. And that was a night I got to play with Steve Morse. He came into town and he played with me and, and, and Kim Mitchell came down and he, he was in the, jam session at the end of the night. It was it was quite a night. We had classical guitar players and flamenco guitar players. But Ed and I played a couple of things together in the middle of the show. And uh, uh, I, I sat down with a big, with that hunk and jazz guitar right there, that big blondie. And he had his old beat up telly. And he came out, I introduced him, he came out, he sat down. And the audience, it was, it was mostly guys, right? Because it's a guitar weenie kind of night. And so it's, it's you know, all these guys standing and it was standing room only. It was packed and it was a hot, hot summer night. And uh, Ed's sitting there and they're cheering so loud for this guy because he's a legend. He's a living legend. But, you know, he, he would normally be playing in small jazz clubs and stuff. Uh, but here he is in this, you know, much larger venue that's packed with all these guys that would never go to see Ed Bickert, you know, ever. But they know who he is and they love him. And so they're cheering and cheering and Ed's sitting there and he doesn't know what to make of this because they won't stop. That It's just getting louder and louder and they're cheering and they're clapping. And it's like the longest ovation he's ever had in his life. And Ed does this thing where he starts putting his hand to his face and he looks like Jack Benny. Like he's doing this Jack Benny thing like, whoa, what is this? You know, with his hand on his hand. And I've got a picture of me and Ed sitting together with Ed, like with his hand on his face. 
And it's one of like, and I'm laughing because I'm watching this guy react to this thing. And we got through the end of that. And I said, well, you know, that just shows you how much they love you. You know, you're amazing. So, you know, what do you think we should do? And he goes, why don't we try a little suitcase, please? Except Ed's voice, when he talks, he's like the guy from the Bits and Bites commercial. You know, the, do you remember that commercial where the guy he goes, what do we got here? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. So Ed's voice is like, why don't we try a little bit of suitcase booze? And I go, okay, let's try it. So that, that was a that was a sweet, sweet memory for me. And then the other time with Ed was uh, they cut us. They, they this was all being filmed. Rhombus Films, uh, Rhombus Media was was making a documentary of, of this guitar festival, but Ed and I got cut out uh, of the final film. And they, they were very apologetic. Uh, Barb Sweet was the lady that was sort of in charge. And she, she phoned up and she said, I'm really sorry. We are premiering the movie down at the Jane Mallet Theater in Toronto. And we would really love it if somebody came to play live. Do, do you think you and Ed might want to come down to the theater and, and reprise the Suitcase Blues for us? And I went, well, I, I think I'd like to do that. Yeah, you know. And so Ed and I got to do it at the Jane Mallet. Which is one of those interesting theaters where it's 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 all raked down and it's like a the stage is actually low and at like at the bottom of, of the seating and it's kind of it's not in the round but it's it's like a little thrust proscenium at the bottom of this raked theater and uh, and and Ed just he played I, I could play the changes uh, let me grab my guitar just real quick uh, I can illustrate this for you. The changes in the verse are like are, are like this. And Ed could play, you know what we were talking earlier about flow. Ed could play over changes like that. And, and he didn't have to think he could just, he could just let it flow. Cause he would hear the alterations of those chords. Like you can play a chord like this in that progression, like this, this chord here, it's got a flat nine. And you can put a flat 13 on the top. And you know where it's going. It's going to a G minor nine. Because you can hear that voice leading. This wants to go here. And this wants to go there, right? Now, Ed can hear that the way you and I hear syntax of conversation. And so he can blow over those changes. And, it, and I would just sit there playing the changes and be going, oh, my God, I'm going to die from goosebumps this is just so good that it, it can't get any better than this like to have ed bickert playing on my tune you know and playing these sublime lines and you know just finding the perfect melody note at exactly the right time on his way through a line and you just go oh god so great so uh one of the best musical moments in my life playing with ed We'll have more from Rick Emmett in three, four days. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. Buy a t-shirt. Help support the channel. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.